Oops, he got lost. There we go. We're still waking up. I understand. Jacqueline Tabani, trouble! I couldn't hear. I'm sorry. Not, not, not your fault, mine. How's everybody oh, feeling? Little hungover? <laughs> Does anybody have a crepe or anything? It's nice and early. I could use. I thought we were starting an omelet station back yeah. right there. <laughs> anybody have any egg yellows? <laughs> these are That's working, so right? Sweet. Are these working? They are working. I hear you. Very sweet. We will share. I've got a granola bar, too. Um, so just as I'm going to go and get your coffee, I want to ask you a question so you can start with the audience. We're going to do Q&A in just a second. But so what did you see last night that you just went, wow, that is cool. Way to go to Dragon Con. We were just talking about it. Yeah, we went, um, was anybody in kind of the parking lot valet section of the Marriott with all the music, the traveling rave? That was like amazing <laughs> session out there. So. Uh, that was fun to watch. It was fun to be completely ignored. I, I honestly, just <laughs> watching. These people just have the time of their lives. I was like, why aren't we involved in this more? <laughs> They're having so much more fun than me. But you guys um, said you saw Donald Trump. Oh yeah, there was, yeah. <laughs> there, was, there was this Asian man who was dressed in lingerie. Not me. With not. <laughs> Might have been, he was wearing a mask. Who knows, so. it was Might have been Reggie. <laughs> and he wore Donald, now I'm saying Donald Trump, Donald Trump mask. <laughs> But his sign said Donald Trump, and he was just dancing around. <laughs> I, I couldn't stop looking at him. It was fantastic. <laughs> it was just, he was, it's like, he's my unicorn. <laughs> Thank you. You're, You're very kind. Bitsy, Bitsy, where did we go? What part of town was that? That was well, like. We, we, we took like a 40 minute Uber five blocks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get. From our hotel, because we didn't Thank know any you. better, and we, we, we had a dinner reservation at 7.15 at a steakhouse. I'm pretty sure we got there well after 8. Because there was oh, yeah. such bad traffic, but I was... We What's that part happy. of town? What's that part of town called? The, the part that we ended up It's like in. West, the west Side. side. West side. It's vague. I'm very vague. I'm but trying to understand. But the Uber ride was actually really entertaining because people were passing us. They were going so much faster than we were. <laughs> like, oh, my God. And also, there was this beautiful yeah. little baby oh, yeah, that was, like, baby. walking at the same speed. At our car. <laughs> and we're like, oh, there it is again. Oh my God. And then this dad, there's this terrifying clown woman oh, yeah. with like, it's, with like the it's. evil eyes. Do you see her? Yes. And the dad gives the baby to the clown. We're talking like. And that baby isn't going to like grow yeah. anymore. It was terrified. <laughs> And we're like, what is that? Was a terrible decision. Was that the was that the lady dressed like the it clown? Yeah, it was a lady with a pointy teeth. evil eyes, Did right? She yes, with pointy teeth. She had balloons. I think so. Yeah, I saw her too, and I was standing on the <laughs> I was standing on the corner waiting for you, and she walked by, and I just went with these. Ah! Because <laughs> it was so creepy, and I I remember that book totally ruining me as a kid, and then there she is. There she is, ruining <laughs> it for everybody. Yeah. Well done to that lady. Yeah, well You're done. out there. So uh, just to get started, I'm going to ask a question. Um, how did your auditions go for Grimm? How did each of you audition? How many times? How did you get the part? As I go back and we'll do Q&A now. Yeah, it's, it's always a mystery. I always assume there was like, well, so-and-so didn't take the offer, so let's go. Okay, you know, they whittle themselves down to my part, and then here, here's little Dave, who's cheap or something. Um, <laughs> I, uh, as, as you were known in season one, right? Little, <laughs> little Dave? Or was little Dave? Uh, I had known one of the producers from something else I did that year, and then I knew the director of the pilot from another thing I had done that year. So kind of like they both were under the guise that I was a great guy, and like the, so like that helped me out uh, once this role came. And I was given the audition. There's a part of year uh, of the year called pilot season when you're an actor where you get um, just tons and tons of auditions, and it's very like you don't even know what, what way is up anymore. But I went in there. And they're usually like, next. But this time, they're like, ooh. I'm like, all right, OK, I've got them hooked. <laughs> and, um, and it went really quickly for me. And then uh, 
Boy, you, you were the first one cast, right? Uh, I think I was the first one yeah. cast. And I then, think they wrote the part yeah. for Monroe. And then... Yeah, yeah, they wrote the... They had worked with Silas before, so they actually kind of wrote that role for Silas. So Silas didn't have to go through a typical studio network test like I did and like Sash and Reggie yeah, did. I, I actually did, didn't for, for this particular role. I didn't for the... Well, I auditioned for Silas's role initially. I wish someone told me that they wrote it for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I cannot have saved me a lot of embarrassment. <laughs> what do you guys think, huh? Funny, right? <laughs> I'll let myself out. <laughs> um, well, when I was actually, David and I had done a movie together maybe five or six months before Grimm, and we played boyfriend girlfriend in this film. And then I was actually doing a test deal for a Fox drama that never even got picked up. But uh, I, he, I texted him congratulations because I was reading that he, he booked the lead and he texted me back and he said, there's a role of my girlfriend on the show that hasn't been cast yet, you'd be perfect for it. And then like my agency called and said, you have a last minute audition tomorrow for a show called Grimm. And if they like you, you're testing in two days. So that, that's really a lot faster than usual. And I went in, and I only did the audition once. So unlike David, I thought I blew it. Because usually they like, like to work with you if they really like you. But they later, Sean Hayes called my agent and said, tell her not to change a single thing. She's testing tomorrow. Do exactly what she did in the room. And I ended up booking it. So it was really fast. How weird is that, though? I mean, that they played boyfriend, girlfriend five yeah. months prior. Yeah. We considered, we considered boyfriend, getting girlfriend group on this show. And now I understand you're a boyfriend, girlfriend. <laughs> I understand that's true. That's pretty weird, right? Pretty amazing. Reg had a really cool thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Well, it, well, first of all, he's going to be humble here, but I'll no, jump well, in. No, no. You. First, first of all, it's like pilot season for Asian actors at that point was like crickets. <laughs> it was like, hmm, pilot season. I should you probably guys have like go on vacation. He right? said <laughs> now. Uh, yeah, but that that. For some reason, that season it was like I was testing for like five, six different things. It was crazy. Uh, and yeah, no, the first, first time I went in, I was like, oh, well, that sucked. And then they called me back, and I was like, why are you calling me back? So, and then I went to the call back, and I was like, that sucked. And then they're like, oh, well, you're testing. I was like, what? <laughs> so I, Tell them who you tested for. Well, yeah, no, so I was coming from a different test, way on the west side. If you know LA, so you're coming from like, um, I was coming from Sony, and I had to get to Universal That's like two-hour hour commitment. So my manager even hired a car service and I was like, I had tests for this comedy over there and like in the middle of like getting into like my suit, you know, I'm changing clothes, being the character, he calls, he was like, well, you didn't get that one. So you have this other one. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally went into the Grimm test and I was like, whatever, let's just go, let's go. But I was testing for the role of Hank. Yeah. So I had auditioned for Hank. And, uh, and I believe I was in the room for that. Huh? I believe I was in the David room for Gentoli, that. David Gentoli, the most, uh, first of all, yeah, you read with all of us. You even read with me at my That was the same day I back. tested, because I yeah. saw you at the test, and I saw you were Russell phenomenal. at the test. Yeah. <laughs> we had a great time, and literally, I think the network test came down to me, Russell, and a Caucasian guy <laughs> that, that shall be unnamed. Yeah. Because you guys would know, you guys would know choice. him. Name this guy. <laughs> yeah. I know. Um, but uh, we were walking out of the parking lot, and I told Ru I told Russell, I said, you know, if I don't get it, I hope you get it. And uh, sure enough, you know, they call him, and I cannot imagine anyone else in the part of Hank. He's phenomenal no, he's in great. that role. Uh, and they called my agent, and they said, you know, uh, we really liked him. We'd like to create a role for him. And yeah, that's the highest compliment you can so get. So it was really very sweet. Um, thank you. Oh, so much love so early in the morning. Uh, but, and then they, and, and so they tried to get it approved and the, and, and the, the uh, head casting director for NBC said, you know, we'll approve it if you name him after me and her name is Grace Wu. And so, oh, hence, right. hence, hence yeah, oh, hence Sergeant Wu was born. Uh, Jacqueline's got this Cinderella story. Yes. You know her story? This is amazing. This is great. Yeah, mine was a little bit more unorthodox. Um, I was in college at the time at the University of Michigan. Any, any Michigan fans out there? Go blue? All right, well. Um, anyway, I was... That, that really landed, Jacqueline. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> We're in Atlanta. Uh -huh. <laughs> we were in Hawaii yesterday. I'm really excited about it, all right? Um, 
No, so I was in a screenwriting class, um, and I was an actor uh, reading one of the writer's scripts, and uh, two producers came in, uh, Jim and Lynn Kauf, to give advice for the screenwriters, because Jim has written a bunch of movie scripts. And his daughter. Um, and his daughter happened to go to Michigan, so he was visiting her, and she was in the art department. I didn't know her, and uh, they were like, hey, we're trying to cast this role. Do you guys want to see what it's like to put an audition on tape? And I was like, yeah! And so the next morning... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like 9 a.m. on a Friday. I'm very lucky that I showed up to class that day. Um, and then I read the next day. I picked up the sides on Friday night, and I read on Saturday, and then I flew out to L.A. on Sunday and um, auditioned in front of the executive producers, and then they flew me up to Portland, and I read with David, um, who did not know his lines. And, uh, <laughs> I already booked the job, Timoni. Yeah, no, it was a fake script. He was very, very nice to show up. He was working like 14 hours a day at the time. And it was like this pretend thing that he didn't have to do. And it was really nice. Um, and then I packed my bags and I moved to Portland. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's outstanding. No, she didn't have to suffer at all. So we've at been all. hazing her since then. <laughs> but it's amazing. And they, and they wait, were looking, wait. they were looking a, like a long time to, for that role. They were, I, know, I knew a lot of people who went out for it. And Sash, weren't you supposed to be like a 50 year old woman? <laughs> I think that's true. Uh, I am. No, but anyway. Um, <laughs> have you not picked up on that's been anyway. So uh, no, I, I auditioned for Silas's role, and that uh, did not go well. And <laughs> I mean, I thought it went well, but I never got called back for that. And then, like two weeks later, at the very tail end, like the last crumbs of pilot season, <laughs> and it was a very hard and, and busy pilot season. Um, the casting director said, "Oh, they'd like to see you for the role of the captain." And I was like, Captain? I didn't even notice there was a captain in this thing. And I, and I, and I looked through the script, and like at, the, at the end, he's got this little thing. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I wonder what they got planned for him. And Because <laughs> he, he, he wasn't very present in the pilot. Uh, and so, um, and he was supposed to be English. Like, he was supposed to talk with an English accent. And, and a lot older, because if you yeah. guys notice, like, they were painting they used to gray my his hair, hair gray yeah. in the beginning. And so I went and walked into a room, and it was... Uh, I was the youngest person in the room, uh, and I was, uh, it was really diverse room. Like, I was just like, every ethnicity, every sex, every sex. Well, let's, let's say two. <laughs> let's say two sex. <laughs> let's round it down to two. And, uh, and then, and then, like, it was just like, and I walked into the room and literally walked out, said, oh, sorry, wrong room. And, and I was like, oh, wait, this is the only room. And, and called my manager, I was like, I think I'm in the wrong place in there really don't know what they're looking for, but it worked out. Uh, but yeah, it's funny, they used to paint my hair gray, and I, Todd Milner, one of our producers, he was really insistent on like, no, no, get that gray in there and stuff. And so like, for like two years, I'm like walking around with all this gray in my hair. And I asked Todd, I said, so how old is this guy? He's like, I don't know, he's like 40-ish. I'm like, you know, what's funny? I'm kind of 40-ish, and <laughs> <laughs> is that really necessary? And so like, <laughs> so if you watch it over the years, it gets a little, more that you know. first season, yeah. man, oh, it, was it was just striped on yeah. <laughs> that Sopranos character. Yeah. So there, those are our stories. Yes. And you? <laughs> Hello. There, there we are. are. Was, and I didn't say it. I'm so proud of myself. Um, I would like to say I'm painting the gray in mine. Sure. Of course. Of yeah. course. Because I'm forty something too. I'm yeah. Painted. Here's our first question. First questions for, for Reggie. How has it felt to be kind of the, the whip, seemed like the whipping boy of, of the, being, <laughs> going to the mental asylum and being bit by the werewolf? So what's that experience been like? What are they going to do to me now? Uh, yeah, no, they've always, uh, I, I think it was David Greenwald that was like, yeah, he's kind of the wild card of Grimm. And sure enough, yeah, there's, there's something going on every season. I love it. I mean, give me, give me, you know, give me more of that. But it, literally, if, they, if you're going to, keep me anxious for like eight episodes. If you could warn me that I'm gonna be anxious for eight episodes, it would help. Because literally that point of finding out took a while. I mean, they kind of, that, that's true. When they, when they find something, they drag that sucker out. So, um, yeah, so, <laughs> no, but when I turned into a, a into Neander Wu, um, <laughs> when I turned into Neander Wu, Thank you, David Gentoli. Uh, they, 
I, they were like, I, I said, oh, something's happening here. Yeah, nothing's going to happen until the next full moon, which is like four episodes away. So you're safe. But literally, you know, things start happening within those four episodes. So now, I don't know. I mean, they've told me a little something else, which I can't divulge for season six. But um, what is it? It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. It's 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 a blast. I, the more stuff you get thrown like that as an actor, it's like a kid in a candy store. So I dig it. Awesome. Thank you for that question. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, and just a reminder, we do have a Q and A line, but also if you have a mobility issue, raise your hand. One of my minions will tell me, and I'll come and up here to you. So here's our next question. Hi. Hi. Um, so you guys seem to have like really close familial bonds almost like you guys are a family especially like the panel yesterday I came and saw that and it was so cool like just to see your interactions how was it I guess Jacqueline how was it kind of coming into that a bit later than everyone else like how was it welcoming her um, in I guess we still haven't welcomed her yeah <laughs> still on the outskirts we're not sure <laughs> no I think uh, I should have been, I think, a little bit more nervous um, than I was. I, I mean, it was like open arms. It was incredible. And coming out of college and like all your friends are still at school and you're living in this hotel room alone. And God, I can't thank them enough. It's been like, uh, I feel like everybody's little sister. It's amazing. And so I'm very, very thankful. I know very I'm getting sweet. emotional. Um, <laughs> She's I'm, I'm really thankful because it's been like an amazing experience and I've learned so much from these guys and uh, I've also had a lot of fun with them, so it's great. Thank yeah. you. She was like, because you know, we're in the middle of season three and they're, those are long hours. I, I am, I'll speak for myself, I was just like, Ugh, like a cranky old, can't even think anymore. <laughs> And then this college girl rolls in, and she's like, let's get some, let's get some drinks. <laughs> and she can like, she like brought a wonderful kind of energy that I think everybody kind of needed it's and true, really loved. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, yeah, definitely injected us with a little bit more oomph. <laughs> and she's still young. She can like go out and get like, drinks and then the work, work the next morning. She, she like, doesn't know how like, that feels when you're like my like, bouncing off the walls. <laughs> it's so exactly. funny. It's like we were coming in with our coffee. Isn't like, this, is this great? <laughs> <laughs> Slow down, Try kid. Give me Exhume me <laughs> from my trailer. <laughs> Get off of him. Young whippersnapper. <laughs> She'll learn. <laughs> <laughs> We've got our next question. Hi. 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 Um, so, what has been y'all's weirdest fan interaction? Oh, I have a feeling it's coming up shortly. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, weird one. What's a weird one? We've had some weird ones. Do you We've guys ever really see that one. YouTube video, Ninja Cat? This was like season one, and I was thinking, I'm like, if this is what it's gonna be like, I'm in trouble. Um, Cause it was, it happened so early, but there was a girl following me around a grocery store, cause she wanted a photo. And I'd just gotten off an international flight and I was sick. So I was like, I don't want to take a picture. And she was really, she just kept following me around as I was like shopping at 11 o'clock at night so I would have milk and stuff. And I swear it was like I would walk down an aisle and she wouldn't be there and I'd turn around and she was right there. <laughs> and it happened for like 15 minutes and I just kept thinking, this is like Ninja Cat, it's so weird. That, that was the weirdest one for me. I've had, we've, I mean there's, there's been a lot of weird Kind of like, oh, that was fun and weird. And then I just remember one time Silas and I was, were getting a drink at, it, uh, I don't know, like season two-ish. And we're in Portland, so that's already kind of, it likes being weird, and it's, we love it. Um, yeah, that's yeah, right. Man. That's right. But I remember Silas was like, what, what, what? And he like looks out this window, and we just see a man in a suit with a wolf mask on, just <laughs> walking by. <laughs> Just kind of like this little wolf angel suit boy. <laughs> He's like, was that for me? I'm like, I, who knows? <laughs> Wait, DG, can you please tell the one about the airport incident, the airport 
Ooh. Oh, when they wanted me to yeah. hold. Uh, no, mispronounced the. Yeah. Oh, okay. This was that one. In. Okay. <laughs> and we broke both Mr. Lee and Mr. Roy's. What? <laughs> just you're broken. You're done. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I just? No. <laughs> Here's our next question. Morning. Good morning. morning. First of all, Reggie, you are the glue that holds the show together. Oh, dude. Oh, we are loving all the woo love. Thank you, man. Woo! <laughs> thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Uh, but I'm telling you, I'm the, thank you. <laughs> My next question is for the entire panel. Season two and three, Nick's character evolved, strong, fighting, nobody really got on him. Season four and five, kind of got a little sucker punches here and there. Um, I wanted to see if season six you're coming back out to where you're back to your evolution where you just kick butt. Yeah, yeah, there's a, uh, I think the end of season five, uh, Burkhart got, kind of took it back into his own hands a little bit with that. If you guys haven't seen the finale, I'll keep it vague. Uh, yeah, I, I, I took out like an entire small city. <laughs> so, <laughs> which is, which is, that was very fun. So I feel like that's kind of happening in season six too. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, season six, uh, it's, it, I, what I love about season six, the writing is great, but it's really about the core characters and the drama amongst them. And uh, it's great. He, everyone kind of gets back to who they were originally. Good and bad. That's right. Yeah. I also think he's, like, uh, towards five and six, he's fighting a uh, more powerful Besson. I think throughout two and three, it was kind of monster of the week a little bit. So it's these normal people that don't have a lot of, like, training, and now he's fighting like this guy who is much more powerful than like, you know, the plumber that lives next door. So, uh, no more plumbers for you, Nick. Yeah, I don't think Damn it would be it. an easy journey for him. It's good. Good question. And yeah, there's a lot of woo love. A lot of woo love. Yeah, we love this. Loves their woo. And, we, and, and I think the other thing we kind of want to know if there's ever going to be um, the Grim and the Captain going at it. Well, we did in five. You, you did yeah. a little bit in five. At yeah. the end a of little season bit. five, like we, there was a big, destroyed was a big my moment. Office. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, poor Most Cosmos. of season six, the captain spends redecorating his office. It's like <laughs> doilies and just like. Well, he's the mayor where now. Where to put he's gotta, his he's name plaque. Too. Yeah. He's, got, he's, got, he's the mayor now. He's got to decorate two true, offices. True, true, true. Here's our next question. I have a two-part question. My first part is... Um, are you planning on taking the show up to Seattle so I can see Seattle besides Portland? As soon as they offer those tax credits, <laughs> we'll be there. And my other question is, I was wondering, how do you like Dragon Con so far? Because with the last two years, you've not been here, and I've been at the panel, and you've not been here. Well, we, well, we had some stars, and then a little bit of a break, and now we got all five. This is kind of awesome, so this yay. This fantastic. These panels, so they, like... This is great. The panel yesterday was really fun. This panel's been really fun. We've um, never had so many of us at any single Yeah, yeah that's it's what's so, so fun. fun. I've never done more than, like, <coughs> occasionally maybe there's three of us. Usually it's just me and David. So this is really great having This is my favorite con. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we've done yeah. Yeah. This is true. Yeah. favorite con. Yeah. This is my first con. Oh, so. how cute. to say I'm probably ruined for life because it's been so much fun and you guys are so great. Yeah, this is pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> pretty incredible con. Wait until tonight when you see some of those costumes. Oh boy. Here's our next question. Hi, thank you all for coming. Uh, you guys are all perfectly cast and I just wanted to know whether there is a character or a plot line that you would have liked to have sunk your teeth into, you know. Hmm. <laughs> I, I've always joked about wanting to play like just where Nick is just like he just can't get out of bed <laughs> he like he's eating all these like Schneider's pretzels and he's bloated 
And he just, and he, you know, he's just somebody else. He just calls trouble to do all the dirty work. I would love to see that arc. But, but I don't know. If the show went on, I imagine. Yeah. That's, that's kind of where the trouble. You got this one? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I got this hammy. This bad hammy. <laughs> you, you go, kid. There were rumors a couple years ago that we, we might be able to go to Europe to do one or two episodes. <laughs> yeah, I remember that rumor. It was like, <clears throat> but they were talking about it. They were. And that would have been really, really fun. I, I, I just worked with Christopher Gorham, who was on Covert Affairs, and he said they used to travel all the time overseas and, and really? that it was just so much fun. What? So that would have been great. <laughs> yeah. My goodness. Yeah, I remember thinking that would be cool, and then I remember thinking nuts and bolts, like the actual hours of a day, and it, that would be a, a nightmare production scenario. So I, I don't know. I, I just, well, sorry to be such a uh, buzzkill. We got off the question a little bit, I think. Yeah. yeah I, I, what, you want to do what? I would have liked to have a gun here and there. <laughs> like maybe be, uh, they never give me a gun, and I would like to be like a cop, sort of. I don't know, I want a gun. Yeah, it looks. That's it. It looks cool when they have the gun in one hand and the flashlight in the yeah. other one. Yeah. This. It looks a lot yeah. less cool than that thing Jacqueline gets to do, where she's like, machete. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll see her practicing that move sometimes backstage. Yeah. I like the. Uh, I like like what Monroe has to do. Like I'd love to throw on a cardigan and just you know. get... <laughs> Like, you know, I'm always ripping my clothes off. It'd be so nice to just, like, be in a comfy cardigan, having a bottle of Pinot with, like, Brie, and just talking about watches. <laughs> that looks so nice. Just sitting in my lonely office, just scowling. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have, like, all of our dreams are to be, like, just... Sitting down. Oh my God. <laughs> so, like the whole first season, they kept talking about my cat, Samson. So, not unlike David Gentoli's, I just like to be like in my bed, not having to work. <laughs> the laziest sure. cat. All over Portland, so 24 bad. hours a day, with just like Samson there, and just like petting Samson. Some whiskey. And that'd be the entire episode. <laughs> <laughs> I see playing a video off. games. <laughs> but the first time I literally went into my apartment was like I don't know, it's some like episode. 20 of the first season and it, it was like cat? all like cat figurines <laughs> in my apartment That's so funny with like b movie posters and a video gaming system and i was like oh oh woo <laughs> <laughs> the loneliest man in portland oh, boy <laughs> Well, I actually, I actually thought your apartment was really clever because they have all of these like old detective movies on the wall, um, that like all these old illustrations, and like that's yeah. kind of why he wanted to become a cop was the <laughs> set designer's like thing. I thought it was hilarious. What, one of my favorite things is how, the evolution of our homes and things over the years because the plot lines change so drastically. Like they had an intention, and then for some reason, whether it was like network notes or we couldn't get the actors or whatever, the storyline kind of goes in a completely different way. For instance. I had in my original ap apartment, the penthouse, oh, yeah. in the hallway as you walk in, and you'll see this in the first few episodes, pictures of my daughter everywhere. And you had Before a I had photos. one. <laughs> Not the one you know of, like this brunette who's like 18 <laughs> years old. And it was like lit. And I had to do a whole photo shoot with this girl. Like, there's like this awkward thing in this like season one, like <laughs> eating ice cream, like just like fa father daughter. And she's like off in college or something. And they were everywhere. And then by episode five, they're like, yeah, get those things off. There's no daughter. <laughs> never happened. Get those out. I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> Um, I know a lot of people were upset when Juliet burned the trailer down, but a lot, I know, I know, but... Everybody but the crew. <laughs> that is why the trailer was burned down, and also part of the reason Nick and Juliet's house was sold is that the people who own the house, the exterior in Portland, were kind of like done with it, because everybody goes to Portland and takes photos on their front porch, <laughs> and they're <laughs> like over it. Um, but then the, the thing with the trailer is it was, even though it was like wider than usual because you had to, it was hot and you couldn't move around oh. it. And, and the crew was like, we can't work in this trailer anymore. So they're like, uh, how do we get rid of it? Uh, Bitsy, burn it down. <laughs> 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 and I was like, 
Uh, and all the grips and like cameramen are like, this. yes. Yeah. And all of fandom is like, no. Yeah. <laughs> No, it would be me in a trailer, and then it would be like, and, and Hank and Wu in the trailer, and everybody, it's so sweaty, and you look, just on the other side of the camera is like, 10 sweating, bearded men, just being like, oh, <laughs> get us out of this thing. We have an amazing crew, amazing crew. <laughs> we really do. Really. Bitsy burn it down, I gotta remember that one. Okay, here we go, here's our next question. Hi. 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 Um, you guys are so nice in person. Um, you guys are so gorgeous and the men are so handsome. Thank you. I love Thank you. So my I like is, this one. <laughs> um, what was the biggest shock to you in the script and how did you each react to it? God. They, throw, they have some real doozies in there, don't they? Many, many, yeah. many points. I just remember when Bitsy started turning and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I had no, I mean, seriously, that was a huge direction yeah. change. That was a big change. I mean, that was the biggest one that I had seen. Yeah, I remember they were like, she's gonna go dark. And I'm like, okay, fun. And they're like, no, dark. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, you're like, really oh, great. Dark. Like, eye makeup? They're like, no. You're gonna <laughs> Sultry <kill> dark. <laughs> no. Yeah, the trailer was actually a big one, because I, and I knew that there had been rumblings of like, we gotta get rid of the set, because we can't shoot in here anymore for a while, but I was like, why me? Um, so that was, that was a big one, and then there was one scene in the spy shop where Juliet was just such a bee to everyone. Uh, and it's hard, because they're like my really close friends, um, so Bree and I would be like giggling in between scenes, and then I would have to be like, I'm gonna kill you! <laughs> <laughs> That was, yeah. that was the first time there we, we, cause we, we've often teased things in Grimm that kind of don't go the full journey of the arc. And I think there was a lot of response from the fans saying like, okay, let's, let's do it or we don't. And this is the first time they like went full, you know, through with it with Juliet's character, which you murdered by the way, Thanks. both, both kind of literally and figuratively. <laughs> um, and uh, my hardest one was there like, you're gonna find your mother. Your mom's coming back. Her head's gonna be in a box. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I liked Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio. We're never gonna see her again. Um, that was a big one for me. Anybody else? Um, there were a few. The first time that really happened for me was uh, when uh, we had the love triangle and we had that oh, potion and wow. we had that crazy scene where we were like, you know, fighting and partnering. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, we, like that was a pretty wild scene and I couldn't believe they were writing stuff like that because it was early on in the show So I wasn't sure which trajectory would go so clearly that opened it up to anything as possible uh, When I got shot and killed for a minute I didn't, ex didn't expect that one uh, But they keep throwing stuff out like all of a sudden it's like oh you're gonna have a daughter It's like what and yeah, you know, your mom you have a mom I have a mom and she's gonna bring you back to life. like there's stuff all the time and uh, and you really go into the show, this could have been like a law and order show. Yeah. And then suddenly like, yeah. you know. Yeah. You have a mom, she's gonna bring you back to life. What? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and then uh, there's something coming up in season six too. They just keep doing it. There's, there's oh, yeah. really cool stuff happening in season six as well. I remember the love triangle thing it was the first time I'd ever worked with um, the the reason his shirts come off so easily is not his bulging muscles. Oh, please. <laughs> no, they are. Although they are oh, there. Please. They like, the buttons are barely sewn on. So I, I know we went through a couple shirts because I would like touch him and it would fly open. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Now I have all my shirts set like that. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Oh, sorry, I just. <laughs> Someone get me another one. <laughs> Flexed off another wardrobe. <laughs> um, when Juliet died, I was shocked. Mm -hmm. And reading that was like, I don't know. You, you, you also don't know it's coming. So you're like flipping through, reading your script, and you're like, holy shit! And you freak <laughs> out about it. And then also when Meisner died, I was really sad, and I didn't see that mm. coming. Um, That's true. No, I saw it coming. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, next question. Uh, first off, thanks a lot for coming. You guys have made this 10 times better. Thank you. Having us. I've been coming. Thank you. 
I, I've been coming to Dragon Con for like 10 years, and this is probably the best year ever. Dude, uh, thank so you. Thanks for that. Uh, my question is pretty much for everybody. I don't know if Jackie would be able to answer this one so much, but uh, whenever you guys were auditioning for other roles, what was your yes moment where you had to say, oh, yeah, I could do that, juggle fire, you know, whatever kind of thing. In but, other roles? Yeah, or this one, you know, whenever you had to say, yeah, I could do that, you know, Sword fight. I can, uh, you know, shoot guns with, you know, my feet. Sure, I've, sure. I've held a lot. I've held double machetes and. Yeah, I see you've read my resume. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, in case you guys don't know, like uh, sometimes you would have. I don't know if you guys still do special this, skills. But special skills. <laughs> driver's uh, especially license. Especially like early on in your in your. <laughs> no, seriously. Especially special early, skills. Early, driver's early license. Early on in your in your career, like you know, you don't have a long resume so you fill the bottom with like special skills in yeah. hopes that perhaps you have something to offer and it's always I, like I rem like sometimes they are, they're pretty sad like people will put down you know driving like <laughs> <laughs> okay um, but but um, I remember I was I was getting so frustrated <laughs> at one point that I would just as a joke put down anything down there like just to see if people read that like holding my breath on one leg, like, things yeah. like and I did that, I would write that in there sometimes, and like, honestly, like, I think one person once said, really? <laughs> <laughs> but, but at one point, I had like a series of things, because I was, it was early in my career, and some producer, a really funny guy, he was reading, sitting there going, you know what we really need for this role, a guy who could canoe, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> It is true, it's so sad. I actually had canoeing. In a way. <laughs> That's so funny, man. That's right, bitches. It's just so desperate. <laughs> I, 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 I dared myself at one point, I threw in just to see, and no one ever saw it. I said, can cry on cue when punched on cue. <laughs> it's turned out to be true, actually. <laughs> I did have one role where it was, uh, and I, uh, this was back in Canada when I was living in Canada, um, and it was, and it was um, this movie about these Olympic swimmers, like actual Canadian Olympic swimmers, it was a biopic, and I had to go to the pool, oh no, no, I had to audition, and then um, they said, uh, my, my, uh, in the room they asked like, you know, can you swim, and I said, like a dolphin. <laughs> I actually said, like a dolphin, in the room. <laughs> and, and I was like, whatever. And I went home, and my agent calls, he goes, like a dolphin, huh? <laughs> what? He's like, like a dolphin? Because now they want you to come and audition in the pool. <laughs> to which wow. I responded, more like an otter, really. <laughs> more of an otter. That actually happened. I did get the role at the end, though. I do want to take a moment right now. Yes, that was in Canada. Guess who just became an American citizen, guys? Sasha Royce. Very happy to have you, sir. Just in time for the election. Thank you. There you go. Here we go. We got another question? Hi, you guys are awesome. Hey. Um, this is for Bitsy and, and Sasha. I was just wondering, it's a two-part question. What was your reaction when you found out you had to put your head on his naked body. <laughs> and how did you prepare for that? <laughs> how does one prepare for that? That scene. Oh, that it wasn't funny. done digitally. That was a remarkable scene. <laughs> I, I was supposed to be naked. And I, I put this on my social media accounts. I walked into my trailer that morning, and there were probably 80 different options of bras and, and nude spanks and different colored nude underwear and everything. And they were like, you figure out some combination of this where you're going to be comfortable being on set with Sasha. And I'm like, no. Like, it, it just was so weird, that, that whole scene. And we, then We were both like pretty much naked, except yeah. for these little loincloths and things. And the funniest thing was I was doing push-ups backstage. <laughs> yeah. You know, as you do. And, <laughs> and, uh, and Bitsy joined in, and, and we're both like, like quasi naked, just doing push ups and things. And, and the crunches. PA, the poor yeah. PA came in, Cam, I think he came yeah. in. He's like, hey guys, oh my God. And he like, <laughs> <laughs> we're like this. Like two and naked people on the, the floor, kind of grunting and stuff. He's like, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, we're just. <laughs> oh, boy. 
we have a lot of fun. Yeah, that was awkward. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop giggling. Okay, this will be, unfortunately, our final question for this panel, but we do have a panel tomorrow. That's yes. right, guys. Come back tomorrow. tomorrow. Yes. So, yeah. And they're going to be, after this, they're going to be at the Walk of Fame and doing their photo ops. So go find them over there. Woo-hoo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Uh, hi. You guys have no idea how much of an honor it is to stand here in front of you guys. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Aww. So my question is, um, were you guys familiar in the show with German before entering, or were you, did you have to learn it, and did it cause any problems while filming? <laughs> did the German cause any problems while filming? Germans... German never causes problems. <laughs> never, never. <laughs> never happened. No, we have a great dialect coach, but I don't really think anyone speaks German on the show. No, Silas, I think, has the easiest Silas is trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Silas has, I think, kind of a good mastery of it. I mean, not that he speaks it, but he seems to really get... Oh, he well. loves, like, getting, diving into <laughs> that German. Like, he'll correct us as far as, like, pronunciation, poor Brie. I think She's I like, know. I don't care, Silas. Yeah. <laughs> Silas, I don't speak German on the show or in real life. Uh, Damien speaks it, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Meisner yeah. actually German. speaks that. They've been really cool about season one at some point. They're like, does anyone speak any other languages? And I speak Spanish. Reggie speaks Tagalog. Sasha speaks French and Russian. So we've... Anybody who speaks another language, at some point, it has, we've been able to utilize it. I love that aspect of the show. Yeah. I think it makes it so fun and different from other shows. Like Special, skills. Special skills. Special skills, guys. Skills. <laughs> Driver's license. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> I actually, I got really lucky because Trouble knew nothing coming in, so I kind of got to learn it uh, as she did, so I didn't really have to know anything, which was great. Like, you came in as a royal, like, you're supposed to know all this stuff, you know what I mean? I, yeah. <laughs> Still learning. Uh, Renard, I never know anything. It's just they make it seem like I do. <laughs> it's, 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 that's, that's my favorite part, it's like, Oh, yes. He's not giving anything oh, yes. away. That script will eventually come, and I'll know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, there, so there are no hints beforehand. It's not, you know, like six episodes before you're going you're gonna to have a new baby. No, maybe a baby. You but. may get, like, a, some notice of something, but you don't know when or how it's going to come about. There's a little canoeing. Yeah, a little, <laughs> a little swimming. <laughs> Well, I think one of the things about this show has made it so great is we can tell you guys are a family. We can tell you guys love the show. And I can see, and everybody here can see, you love our fans. So thank Absolutely. you guys for being here. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you.